project actually came about through a conversation in a coffee bar. And this was a conversation with our customer. Uh, and he said, look, we've got an issue. And the issue is with some of the vehicles that are currently in theatre. And the challenge was, uh, they liked another vehicle that we produce, which is called the, uh, the Mastiff. But it's a very large vehicle, big six by six wheeled vehicle, 12, 15 tons. It's big, it's heavy, it's hard to maneuver around the streets. Uh, but it is fabulously survival. People can walk out the back of it alive. And they said, we like that but we also want about the size of a Land Rover, and that's the challenge. So when we were putting this team together to develop this vehicle, uh, we looked around our business at the different capabilities we had and what we brought to the party. In addition, we looked outside of the business, and General Dynamics brings with them a wealth of, in particular, protection experience uh, from vehicles that they've developed. So what we told from day one was, there are only five requirements. The turning circle of the vehicle, the size of the vehicle in terms of its physical width, and both of those are related to the ability to turn around in tight streets and alleys in places like Kabul and Afghanistan. The third was, we want this to be the very first vehicle to have the new MOD, what was called generic vehicle architecture. Uh, an architecture where you can plug and play in different subsystems that and to rip out lots of wires. We were the first vehicle. Fourth three, we want to be a composite vehicle in terms of the pod, and that's because the government research labs have worked out this was a really good way of uh, protecting the vehicle without getting all the spool you'd get through normal metal vehicles. And the final one, and the most important requirement, is we want it to be mine blast and IED survivable at extremely high levels, close to what we achieve on the big Mastiff vehicles. Normally vehicles of this type, you take a commercial platform, you apply armour and protection systems onto the vehicle. We couldn't do that with this. We had to start blank sheet of paper. So Ricardo brought a lot of its systems engineering approach, its modelling and simulation. Uh, we brought people from our motorsport and our light weighting capability. And the issue for us as a team wasn't just about minimising the bureaucracy we normally get from the, uh, the MOD. It was also clarity of the team about what they're there to do, what motivates people, particularly when they're coming from a variety of backgrounds, uh, commercial automotive, motorsport, uh, marine engineering, military, civil servants. Uh, getting them all together and motivating them this one single mission that we're actually there to save people's lives, uh, that is something that gets you up in the morning. But for us as a business, we think it's a very big opportunity. Uh, we operate across a wide range of sectors and we see opportunities to bring technology and process from one sector to another. A couple of examples might be motorsport, where experience in rapid program delivery and lightweight materials is very effective in other sectors. Uh, another might be off-highway, where autonomous vehicle operation works very well on today's challenge for autonomous and connected vehicles on road. I think it's a really good initiative. I think it sends the right message to the industry that we can work across sectors and then we can bring technology from one to another. And a common message in the engineering industry has got to be a good thing.